Greetings and welcome, my name is Tobel and this is going to be a tutorial video on how to make your own YouTube creations, whether that's games or a hobby or something else. Uh, a lot of the same topics that I'm going to cover in this video can be applied to whatever you're interested in doing, although I do Let's Plays exclusively, so you'll probably get a feel that this is more geared towards games. So you're looking at a couple things on the screen right now. In the foreground, you see a program called Reaper. Reaper is my audio, my digital audio workstation. Uh, this is a DAW. This records my voiceover on a separate track that is independent from the recording of my video game and the video game music and sounds. So I actually take two separate files. One is an MP4, one is a .wav file, and I mix those together in my post-production program called PowerDirector. PowerDirector is what I use. It is, I believe it's around $100 if you get it um, straight off the website. But I think that Steam has a lot of sales on software, so you might want to keep an eye out for a pretty decent sized sale on PowerDirector if you're so interested. Reaper has a 60-day trial that you can use, and afterwards, uh, it's pretty. It's honestly a really cheap cost for software. I, for, for what it does for you, especially, and I believe one of the qualifiers is, if you are an individual who makes less than $20,000 uh, per year, then you can, use, uh, you can purchase the license for the individual $60 license. So it's a great program. I love it, and it was recommended by a gentleman named Booth Junkie. He does a lot of work. Well, that's his YouTube channel. He's not named Youth Junkie, uh, Booth Junkie. He's not named Booth Junkie. That's his YouTube channel, but he does a lot of voice at overwork that can be applied to what you're doing for gaming. So that is my voiceover part of my commentary part of my video. I'm recording this. As soon as we get ready to play the game, I hit that record button and I, and I do something else, by the way, and we're going to take a look at that real quick. I have to have a way to synchronize my audio file with my separate video file. And you'll see what I mean when we get into post-production. But what I use is a little dog toy or a pet toy. It's a clicker. Normally it's to tell your pet you've done something good. And I use that to make an indicator on my visual, like a visual indicator of where I'm at in my sound. And I'll show you what I mean. And this is an ear warning, a noise warning. This is going to be a bit of a sharp sound. So I'm going to do that. Did you see how that huge spike comes in this wave representation? That is a quick indicator to me that that's where I happen to do my uh, my click. And sometimes I use that if I make a mistake. That way I can go back in post-production and know immediately that, oh, that's that spot where I sneezed all over the microphone or something like that. So this is the audio part. The power director is post-production. And the only other thing that you're not looking at is GeForce Experience. GeForce Experience is the recording tool that I use for my videos. I've tried OBS. I've tried different variations of that. But for me, the built-in GeForce Experience, I think it's called Shadow Play, is the actual uh, software that does the recording. This runs amazing and it records amazing videos at very, very high quality. My settings are normally at 1080p HD with a 60fps frame rate and as much bitrate as I can get. This does wind up having huge file sizes, but the quality is outstanding. Okay, so this is what I do right before a Let's Play starts. I'm in the main menu. And if I'm coming back from a save file, of course, I load the game up and I go from there. But if this is a brand new Let's Play, I normally start on the, the main menu. Now, in every episode of every video I do, I have to synchronize my video and my audio. So you saw what I did earlier with that click. I'm going to do that here and show you what I mean. I'm going to go three. And by the way, audio ear warning. Three, two, one. Sync, sync, sync. Okay. You'll see why I did that here in just a few minutes, and it's going to become really clear to you. So from here, I've got my voiceover running, and I also have my game recording. So GeForce Experience is actually recording the gameplay itself and the game sounds and music on into one file. So I normally go through here, play my game, do whatever I'm doing. I'm not going to get into a ton of stuff about the content of the Let's Play itself. I would love to make a tutorial video if you all ha want some ideas about that down the road, but I really think it should be your own thing, right? You don't want to do what I do, what Quill does, what Arumba does. I mean, be, use people as, as inspiration for sure, but make sure to come up with what's comfortable for you. Uh, if you would prefer to have uh, a silly commentary, if you want to have like more, I think, robot style, you know, gameplay, that's absolutely fine. It's whatever works for you is going to be what does it. And it really comes out in your quality because if you're if you don't like something, people will know that. So make sure you're doing something and doing it in a way that you enjoy. Have fun. That's the most important thing I can tell you. All right. So we're going to skip ahead. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and do an hour and a half worth of recording in one go. Okay, so we're done with our game, we finished recording, now we want to do some post-production work because we have separate files and maybe we want to clean some things up, maybe we sneezed a bit all over the microphone, had to take a quick bio break, whatever it happens to be, you can do it in post-production. Now your, of course, your system might vary your software that you're doing post-production in. There are some free alternatives, open source. The, the problem I've found with those is they tend to leave a watermark or they only let you record at a certain quality. So I just went ahead and bit the bullet and got PowerDirector. Um, and that way I'm able to out, you know, output my main really high quality 1080p videos with no watermarks, with no, you know, with no drama. It's, it's all right there. So I'm going to drag over my two files. Now, uh, PowerDirector comes with a couple, these are called tracks here. So you're able to kind of add in different tracks from different sources, and it has a slot or a track for your voiceover. So I'm gonna drop my voiceover into that slot. Now, personally, I know that I bump my sound to about 7.5 decibels bonus um, outside of my audio system. I actually do it in PowerDirector. So it gives it a little bit more of a boost. Let's just see how it sounds somewhere halfway in the video. Uh, what their fame is compared to yours. Okay, so, and what I'm doing right now is I have my headphones maxed out. So I've got the volume on my own headphones maxed out. And I noticed that that's a pretty loud sound. But that's what that's the way I want it. I want to make sure that I'm coming across, number one, clear and loud. And number two, I want to make sure that the game sounds are a supplement to what I'm saying and not a distraction. At the same time, I'd like to have something in the background to make sure it's just not me talking, kind of like it is right now. Mostly I don't have a reason to have a background music in this video, but generally speaking, through a Let's Play, I will have some kind of background sound. All right, so we have a pretty long video here, and at the start, if you remembered, we did that clicking. So why do we do that clicking? Well, the problem is, if we just started to play the game, not everything is synced up because I started my video recording at a separate time than I did my audio recording. Maybe sometimes it's only two seconds, but people will notice if you're reacting to something and it's off sync, it'll be a little bit odd. And it comes into play more if you're doing something, you know, if you started your video recording 30 seconds after your audio recording. So what I did, let's click off my microphone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for in my video section, I'm going to look for when I start clicking on the options button. I think I made a mistake. There we go. So here's so right here. One, two, three. That was three clicks. So where's the first click at? Right about there. Let's bring it back just a notch. And I know that I actually have to skip forward a bit instead, just because of the way the files are. So let's go back to options right there. So this red line is roughly where I do my first click. And you can see the three clicks that I made on my dog toy represented in the audio bar down here. So I could immediately, you know, if I click and drag from here, and we'll line these up, they should be relatively close. Ready? Oh, I have to re-enable my microphone, my voiceover part. That's what they wanted. <laughs> Boom. Okay. So our three clicks are all on, uh, all in sync right now, which is great. I'm going to move forward in the video and go to where I start doing my voiceover. This is normally an indicator that I've actually started doing my gameplay. Greetings and welcome. Okay, so I try to time it right before I do my little intro. And if you heard, I was setting something down here. <laughs> Looks like I was throwing something. So I try to make sure I cut out any background noise. And I'm going to put a split in here. Greetings and welcome. Perfect, right at the start of the video. So I'm then going to highlight the content before, delete it, and move everything to the start of the video, and then... Boom, we're right on track. We've got everything lined up. In the vein of the old Age of Empires 2. Okay, so we've got our, our big long video. Now at the end of my videos, I normally put, you know, sometimes you might put a fade out or something like that. So we can zoom down to the end of the video. This is rather long for me. This is actually a, a three-parter that I'm gonna split off because I just did, I just recorded it all in one go. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna see what my outro's like. DLC, I believe, and uh, we'll see how that goes as well. Thank you all so much for watching. And boom, right there at the natural end of the video, I'm going to put another cut in and delete this little bit of extra audio because normally I have to exit my game and then stop my recording. So we can also put a cool little fade out. Uh, Power Director has a great thing called a transition room. Lots of really cool effects that you can do. So I'll just put a fade out here and then it has a nice professional looking fade to black. And then you can put through YouTube, you can actually use YouTube cards at the end of your video. If you have 
uh, other videos you want people to watch or you want to direct people or give them a message, you can use a card in that. And I actually need to bring my audio down just a notch. The yellow is indicating that some sound is being cut off. So I don't want to have too much of that. So we'll just bring it down to about there. Should get you pretty Still loud enough. Okay. So we have our full video ready to go. It's a one and a half hours. I could split this video down. In fact, what I normally do is split it around 30 minutes or so. So for example, I would find in, everyone's a bit different. Sometimes it depends on the, on the game. If I'm wrapping my game or this episode, I'll say something like, okay, and we're going to wrap this episode up and we'll, I'll see you again next episode. And then I just do a manual transition that seems more natural because I'm saying goodbye. In my next video, I say hello. This particular video, I just wanted to play straight through and I knew ahead of time that I was going to cut it in the middle around 30 minutes for each episode. So I'll find somewhere that doesn't seem abnormal to just kind of cut. What were we talking about right here? Let me scout real quick. Uh, our shield bear. Okay, good. So that was two separate thoughts. So what I'll do is put myself a little cut in right at the end of uh, roughly about we're at 30 minutes and 0.09. 30 minutes and 9 seconds into the video. I'm going to put a cut. I'm also going to add a fade on either side of this cut. So it seems like a little bit more of a natural fade away. Let's make this person a scout real quick. Right? So it doesn't feel quite so smooth, but that's okay. Yeah, we're just basically cutting it. We're going to import uh, or we're going to export each of these sections into their own videos here in just a bit. I'm going to go down to the one hour mark, find another natural point where I was uh, kind of between thoughts. And I'm actually looking here. This is my speech pattern. I'm looking for a bit of a gap, like right here. What were I talk? What was I talking about right here? Pull these two out. Oh shit! The bear's coming. Oh, the bear's coming. Well, that's in the middle of a fight, right? So we don't really want to interrupt that. I wouldn't say high intensity, but that's kind of a focus moment. We'll have to find another spot. Fighting strength, but then again, so does the enemy. Perfect. Let's do another spot right there. Cut the video. Put a fade on either end. Now, I've got three split sections of my one long video. How do I make these into their own separate 30-minute videos? Now, the way that I found it to be effective is I actually save this file three separate times. So I'll save it as NorthGuard1. I've already done this a couple times, but I'll save it as NorthGuard1, or whatever your game title happens to be, 2, and 3. All right, so we're in Northguard 3. This is going to be the third episode. So we, obviously we've split this into three easy chunks. What I'm going to dilute, uh, do is delete the first two sections. And then boom, all we're left with is our last section. It's 30 minutes long. I can immediately go into the production area and post-produce it or send it out from there. I actually just kind of keep the same settings every time. I have gone into my settings and messed around with my default so that whenever I produce a video, it always produces as mp4 and it's not the highest quality possible but i don't really see the need to go to 60 mbps the quality does not matter that much that the difference in quality levels does not is not really noticeable so these are all the settings that i use personally and it puts it out into my youtube folder where i have all my stuff all nice and organized so there we go we've got our ng3 episode i can save that for the minute and then i'll go back to the ng2 north guard 2 file and we've got same thing. We can take the videos on either side of the center one because this is the second episode. Boom, it's ready to go as well. So then the same thing for the first video. So you get the idea. That's how I break out one really long video into two or you know two or three or four separate episodes. Now I'm sure there's a way to do that more efficiently. It's just what I found that works for me. It's really quick. It takes like I don't know 30 seconds to do, and we're good to go. Uh, PowerDirector has a really cool feature called Batch Produce, by the way. And this lets me produce lots of episodes in a row. So if I add these three files that we just messed with, I'll do these three because these are actually trimmed up the way I want. So these are PDS is the power director type of file. It's got all your content in there. It's got all the editing that we've done. Uh, the only thing you have to do in the batch producer is kind of change the format to what you want manually, which is a little bit annoying. And I'm sure there's a way to do this efficiently. I've not found it yet, but... I will go in here normally, change everything to MPG4, change everything to a higher quality. I think I actually went and accidentally did 60. No big deal. 
And what this would let you do is do a batch processing. So say, for example, I'm going to bed, right? I've recorded six episodes today. I've done all my post-production, but I don't want to sit here. I can't really use my computer when these are processing because it lags my computer down to nothing, right? Because it's using a lot of resources. So batch produce lets you set everything to go at night or whenever you want, really, if you're going out to eat or something like that, I can start the produ the uh, the batch production, and it's going to actually export all of these into their own files, and I can tell my computer to shut off, or I can just leave it alone. And it also tells you how big this uh, estimated project will be. So that's roughly what I do for my batch production or my normal production. There's some cool stuff you can do with um, well with PowerDirector in particular. Um, you can add little effects in here. So for example, if we wanted to I don't know, maybe we had a moment, okay, let's say that we were actually going to go to, let's undo what I just did, let's find a nice big gap in my voiceover, maybe right here is fine. And let's say that right before this break, I had said something like, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna speed up the video because we have to do a bunch of grinding, and I don't want you to have to sit and wait for all that, so let's do a bit of a montage or a speed up video, right? So you're going to you're gonna speed the game up so people don't have to sit there and watch everything, but you want them to kind of see roughly what you're doing, right? So we're going to do a bit of a speed up montage, and let's say that this is going to be a five minute video, and we'll come over here somewhere, um, right over here seems fine. We'll cut it here. So we've got this big section to work with. The first thing is I'm going to mute my voiceover clip because during a speed up process, unless you're talking over the the speedy the, the sped up part, which is fine. Maybe you're giving everyone a quick rundown on what you did what you did or why you did it. That's absolutely fine. In my example, what I normally like to do, I'm going to delete this and leave the gap. I like to add in a bit of music. Uh, YouTube has an awesome selection of free music and sound effects, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to import something I've already downloaded from YouTube. Uh, it's called St. Francis. It's just a song. And I'm going to import it and drop it down onto the second track. All right. So there's our music. Now, the other thing we want to do is speed up the actual clip itself. So for PowerDirector, an example, we can do video speed. And let's say I want to speed this video up about four times. There we go. Four times speed multiplier. And you can see it shortened everything way down. So if we play this at the end, you'll see that it's kind of jarring here, though, when it changes. Okay, so we want to make that a bit more smooth. So to do that, we're going to drag the music over both ends of where the clip terminates. You can the, My sped up clip, this is my sped up section. You can actually see how fast everything's going here, right? And what you can do, and again, this is particular to PowerDirector, but most video editors have this kind of a thing. Um, it's This one's called keyframe. This is letting me specify certain uh, certain settings at certain times. So maybe let's say I can use my red bar for guidance. So maybe right before we transition to that sped up part, it's quiet, but then it starts to get louder. So my music starts to cut in over my voice. I really don't want you fighting the bear home slice. Oh, for goodness sake. Right, you can hear the music kind of picking up, picking up. And then it's up to its normal volume. So that's something that just makes those transitions a little bit smoother. Now we can also do the same thing on the other end of that, which is to make the sound kind of fade away. So it's not a jarring halt. So I can go back to my keyframe, go all the way to the end of the video, say that, hey, I want this end to be really quiet. And I want it to start getting quiet a little bit before I come back and start doing my voiceover. So we'll put this at zero. And now we've got a natural fade out. Uh, by the way, you're also hearing game sounds. So what I sometimes do, depending on the game, depending on what I'm doing, I'll mute the... Uh, I, oh, actually, I can. I think I have to unlink this. Link, unlink video and audio. Because when GeForce Experience records your gameplay, it's recording both the video track and the audio track to combine into one file. So for some reason I can't mute this, but I'm going to go ahead and just delete it. That's the gameplay sound area, okay? And you can start to hear the fade off right as you start picking back up in your voiceover. So it, you can mess with those settings, but it really leads to some really cool transitions. Maybe if you come back and it's at a different scene than what was at the last bit of the, um, the sped up section, you can also add yourself a bit of a fade in effect or fade out effect. 
So it just gives it, again, a little bit more of that professional polish. And uh, it's, it takes like three seconds. It's all built in. It's, it's tons of great tools are built into most of these editors. All right, so that's pretty much it. I wanted to give you a quick, like, this is how I edit a video, personally. It's a pretty easy way to deal with uh, making your own videos, making your own YouTube creations. Again, if you haven't started, if you have no idea what to do, I do hope this is an okay starting point for you to be able to just experiment, um, go from there, and there's tons of resources. I'm going to try to put a couple of links down below that are going to be great tutorials for both uh, Reaper and PowerDirector. Again, I understand that not everyone has the money to grab PowerDirector. There's some free options out there. It really depends on what you want, like how, how dedicated, how how much do you want to do this, um, you know, you're recording on YouTube, do you want to invest $60 now to have some high quality content or do you want to just deal with the watermark and, you know, try to fix it later on? It's up to you. It's everything. There's no right way to do anything. I'm just giving you different options. So um, the last thing that I would cover is the actual uploading of the video. So over on YouTube, once you're on your, uh, when you're in your YouTube studio, this is actually kind of a more recent change to YouTube, you can upload a video and it'll take you to kind of this upload center. And you can see here that I'm currently uploading three of those parts of the game. Uh, North Guard, Let's Play, Let's Try, Episode 1, Episode 2, and Episode 3. And what I would normally do is have an Add More Videos button go into my folder that I have my files and I would start uploading it right there. Now, it starts off with just the file name in the description of this video here. So what I've done is went ahead and made a little, you know, a little uh, summary here, my title of the video, uh, a really short description. I also always tend to include my community information in the description. This is something that'll show up below the video if someone clicks read more. We've got a couple of tags in here. I also have a custom thumbnail that I've made off of using Pixlr. And I've also added the video to my North Guard playlist, and I've scheduled it for release at about 4 o'clock today. Um, hope it's got to about two minutes left. Now, the one thing I want to give you or point out is that YouTube will, if this video is done in two minutes and I post it live, it will be done. However, it's kind of like the first pass. It's the, it's the lowest encoding available to go live. And so it's only going to be available at 360p with all those sweet, sweet pixels right in everyone's face. So I would encourage you to make sure you give yourself about at least an hour after you upload your video until it goes live. So you can use the schedule feature or you can manually bump it to public after you've reviewed the video yourself. But that gives you enough time or gives YouTube enough time to go through the encoding process and have that 1080p quality ready to go. So when it says processing and it's got 43 seconds remaining, that's the first pass. It's not going to be the highest quality yet. YouTube still has to do some more work in the background. So that's why I've timed this to release in about 30 minutes. And then the other episodes are going to release about 30 minutes after that. They're all scheduled, ready to go. They're going to go into their own playlist. I really don't have to do a whole ton. Uh, this video didn't have the playlist available yet. So there we go, or the, um, the um, thumbnail available or the playlist, North Guard scheduled for today at 5 p.m. and I'll save those changes and we're all good to go. Thank you all so much for watching this tutorial video. If there's anything else I can try to help explain or give you some tips on, please let me know. Otherwise, take care.